But investor behavior is still by far the biggest reason for poor portfolio performance. Which brings us to our next topic, relentless discipline, our behavior. So we have an additional challenge when we're investing. It is our behavior. I was watching the Horse Whisperer movie with Robert Redford, and I saw, wow, that's a perfect analogy for investors. And Annie calls him up, and he says, you know, Tom, I read this article about what you do for people with horse problems. Tom says, you know, the truth is, Annie, I help horses with people problems. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not the horse that has the problem. So, same thing. There's nothing wrong with our prudent, diversified portfolios, even if they're down from time to time. We don't have people with portfolio problems. We have portfolios with people problems from time to time. You guys don't because you guys are here today, right? It's like pe preaching to the choir. But some, pri some financial professionals are no different than regular investors. Uh, George Parr, uh, you are in an investment banker. I am, yes. Yes. And uh, as such, you have your fingers right on the pulse of the financial market. Yeah, very much so, yes. <laughs> and uh, during the summer, there's been uh, a great deal of turbulence and volatility, volatility, volatility in, in the market, yes. yes. Tremendous, yes, tremendous. Yeah. Yes, yes, and uh, what has caused that? Well, uh, you have to remember two things about the market. One is that they are made up of very sharp and sophisticated people mm. who, uh, um, these are the greatest brains in the world. Mm. And the second thing you have to remember is that the financial markets, uh, to use the common phrase, are driven by sentiment. Uh, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, uh, things, let's say, are just going along as normal in the market, and then suddenly, out of the blue, one of these very sharp and sophisticated people says, My God, something awful is going to happen! Uh, we, we lost everything! Oh, my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, uh, shall I jump out of the window? Shall I jump out of the window? <laughs> exactly. Let's all jump out of the window. We, oh, we, sell! We've lost a sell! 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 sell. Yes, precisely. Yes, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few days later, this same uh, sophisticated person says, you know, I think things are going rather well. And everybody says, yes, I, I agree with you. you know, I think we're rich. We're rich. Yes. We're rich. Bye-bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye-bye, yes. yes. And that, that is, that's what we call market sentiment. Uh, but, uh, well, <laughs> yes, uh, surely we are exaggerating just a bit, aren't well, we? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, in August, in the middle of August this year, when the market absolutely plunged in, in London, the, uh, a well-known city firm, uh, a State Street Global Markets, mm -hmm. uh, issued a statement in which it said, and I quote, Market participants don't know whether to buy on the rumor and sell on the news. Do the opposite, do both, or do neither, depending on which way the wind is blowing, unquote. <laughs> yes, and this is the kind of rigorous analysis, analysis that companies yes. will pay huge salaries huge, for. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's true. You know, these prognosticators, it, they're no different. The coast is clear, buy, things are bad, sell, and repeat. Dalbar does this study, and, and several other companies come to the same conclusion that do these studies too. Over the last 20 years, the S&P 500 ending 2016 averaged 7.68 percent. The average equity fund investor during that same time period earned 4.79 percent. That's a difference of 2.89 percent per year. That's a big cost when you're investing, a huge cost. And you're taking the additional risk that you're in stocks, 100 percent stocks. It's because they only hold their funds for three and a half years. They have to do something. We call that, Scott and I call that the three year rich. We have to do something. And the do something is usually when the market's down. Not when the market's up, but when the market's down. And the do something is get me out. That's usually the do something, and it costs them big time. Because I showed you in my accounts how quickly, and of course it'd be the same in your accounts, how quickly they can recover. The data suggests investments consistently outperform investors. You know, think about that for a second. The investments that the investors invest in outperform the investors because they get in and out and in and out at all the wrong times. 
call that the behavior gap, the difference between the investor return and the investment return. And that's why Scott and I spend so much time and, and resources and effort putting on these classes for you guys. And that's why we so much appreciate that you guys are here today. Look at, I mean, this room is full. It's awesome, we love it. We wanna shrink or eliminate that performance gap for you guys. No self-inflicted wounds. No self-destructive behavior.